Hi guys, I'm Julian, your host, and you are watching Eat the Blocks, the screencast for Ethereum and blockchain developer. Today, we're going to continue our series on how to build a to-do list decentralized application with Ethereum and Solidity smart contract. During the first two episodes, we wrote the smart contract, and now we're going to start the web application part. For this episode, we're going to build the backend. So the backend is very simple. It just has to serve a static HTML file as well as the assets such as the CSS or JavaScript files. We're going to build this backend with Node.js and the Express Web Framework. This episode is only about web development. So if you don't care about this, don't hesitate to skip to next episodes. So now open a terminal window and we're going to git clone the whole repository. So git clone HTTPS and then github.com slash my username jclepatch slash name of the repo eat the blocks and then dot git so i'm not going to do it because i already did it and then you should be able to step into the folder special episode one so that's the folder of the series we're following and then you're going to create a folder for this step so mkdir step three and finally you're going to copy over all the files of the step two folders into step three so that we have a clean base to start from we when we last stopped to build our app so copy recursive step two and i want to copy everything into step three okay and now if i ls into step three i should see all the file of step two okay so now we can start to build for the step three okay so i'm going to clear up my screen and the first thing that we're going to do is so first we're going to cd into step three and we need um npm to install some dependencies so uh, we're going to init our uh, package.json. So for this npm init, yes. Okay. Um, now we're going to install our uh, first dependency, which is express. So, so npm install and then dash uppercase s so we're going to save this into the package.json file and then the name of the dependency okay so now if you cat your package.json then you should see express so here now we can see dependency express here okay so now we need to create the entry point of our backend so we will call this file server.js Okay, and now open a text editor and open the file we just created. Okay, okay. so first we're going to require express. So const express equal require. So we instantiate express. And we also define a variable that's gonna define the port at which we lessen. So our backend will mainly serve static asset. So for this, we can define a middleware with app.use and then there is a built-in middleware for static asset in Express. So it's express.static. And then this takes the name of the folder in which we'll put our static asset. So we will call our folder app and then the semicolon. We're going to define another static middleware that's going to serve the contract artifact of our smart contract because this will live in another folder. So still the same middleware, so express.static, but this time the folder is different. So it's build contracts. 
So the next thing we need to do is to define the route that's going to serve our static index.html file. So for this, we're going to serve this file at the root URL. And we need to define our callback. So request object, response object. Then we use the ES6 arrow function. And we're going to use the method uh, send file of the response object. And for this, we're going to use the magic variable double underscore DNAME. And then it's going to leave in the app directory and the file will be index.html. Well, actually we can do a little bit better than that use, using e ES6 feature. So here I'm going to use the backtick operator. Here, so I'm going to wrap this magic variable with the dollar and curly brace combination. So it's basically, it's served to let the Node.js compiler know that this is a variable and this is not a literal string. And then we don't need to use this plus here. And we don't need all of this. And we're going to replace this single quote with another backtick here. And yeah, it works. Okay, and this is our only route. And if we receive any other request, then that's an error. So here we're going to define another route that catches everything else. And we define the callback. And basically, we're going to make the status 404. And we're going to send an error message. Oops. this URL does not exist. Okay, and semicolon here and here. And finally, we need to actually make the app lesson to our port. So app lesson, and here we define our port variable before. And in the callback, we go into console log that our app is running. So ETB Ethereum to do this app running on port. And we're going to use the variable that we defined before so that if we change the value of this port, it's going to be automatically reflected, reflected in this console log statement. Okay, and here, I add the semicolon and also for my callback. Okay, so back to our terminal window and we're going to try if everything works fine. So node server.js. Okay, so no error message, so that's good. So I'm going to close this with control C. Okay, so now we're going to actually create this folder app. So mkdir app. Okay, and then we're going to create our index.html file, index.html. Okay, and now back to our text editor and we're going to open this HTML file. Okay, and here we're going to create some very simple HTML just to make sure that everything works. And I'm going to create a body a section and here I'm just going to write it works. Okay, I save this. Go back to our terminal and we're going to restart our app. So node server.js. Okay, and now we're going to open a web browser tab. It works. Okay, so our very simple backend is working. That's great. Okay, so back to our terminal and we're going to close the server. So it's a little bit annoying to every time to have to remember that 
the file, uh, the application start with server.js and maybe that we might change this in the future. So we want to put this in a nice command that is easy to use. So back to our text editor and we're going to open the package.json file. Okay, and we're going to define a command uh, under the scripts entry and this command we're going to call it start and we're going to define this command very simply with node server .js. Okay, and now back to our terminal and we're going to test this. So if I do npm start, normally everything should work exactly like before. And yes, it does. Okay, that's great. So there is one last thing we're going to do. It's basically, we'd like to have a feature where every time we change something in the code, it automatically reloads the app. So we don't have to manually shut down the app and restart it. So for this, we're going to install a very handy node command, which is called node daemon. So this is a uh, global NPM package. So NPM, install global node daemon so i already have it installed so I, i'm not going to do it but basically here you're supposed to press enter and once you have it basically this command replace the node command but it automatically watches for file changes and will reload your app so for example if i do node daemon server dot jazz Okay, so enter and is going to start our app, but in watching mode, and we're going to change something and see what happened. Okay. So we open the server.js file and for example, we're going to, um, we're going to change something like, for example, comment this line. So here we come in this line and we go back to our terminal and what happened here? So here we can see that no daemon said restarting due to changes, starting node server.js. That's it for today, congratulations. So now that we've set up the backend, we still need to set up the front end. That's what we're going to do in the next episode and we're also going to start to interact with the smart contract from the front end. If you like this channel, you can subscribe, you can give me a like, share it, and I hope to see you in another episode. Bye-bye.